Welcome to the Moving to Denver podcast with your host, Haley Bartlett, your Aussie agent. Good morning, everyone. I am back. We are back with another episode of the Moving to Denver podcast. Now, last week I recorded an episode, but it was just a voice episode. So you can find that one on Spotify or iTunes. Um, or you can find it on my website, www.youraussieagent.com, and you can listen to the link there. Sometimes I have not done my hair, or there's things going on where I just um, didn't want to turn the video on, which was pretty much last week. But this week I am back with the video and back with my uh, podcast episode. I'm going to fix my necklace here. So those of you listening, you can't see, but those of you on video, you can. It was a bit of a mess there. So now it's all fixed. So today we are going to tackle a topic that comes up a lot, and that is the cost of living in Denver. So Denver cost of living has definitely risen over the past five to six years. Um, And you'll see, you'll have people that have lived here for a long time that unfortunately Uh, having to leave the state because they can't afford to live here anymore. And then you have people on the other spectrum who are coming from more expensive states that think that they're getting good deals here in the Denver area. So it really just depends where you are at in life, uh, what your perspective is on things as to if Colorado is expensive or not. But today we're going to go through some facts. So I'm just going to get those up now. Um, Yes, I don't have the memory of an elephant like my son does. I don't always remember everything off the top of my head. So I need my handy pieces of paper here in front of me. So if you're watching once again on video and I keep looking down, that's what's going on here today. So yeah, let's talk about how expensive it is to live in the Denver area. And we're going to go through some, you know, uh, thoughts and stats and then my own opinion. And please remember a lot of the time on this podcast, it is my own opinion. And it is things that I have learned from moving here from a different country in a different state. Uh, But that's the joy of having a podcast, right? I get to talk and waffle on about my own thoughts, which You know, some people may find boring, some people may find interesting, but I'm hoping that at least people pull bits and pieces out of my episodes that help them when they are moving here to the Denver area. So let's look at the average sold price in Denver for houses. And this is according to the Denver Metro Association of Realtors, $499,807 for an average detached family size home. So you might looking at three plus bedrooms, two plus baths um, in an average area. So of course, if you're going to live close to the city, that average house price is going to go up. If you're going to live further out, it may go down. I know coming um, east, oops, excuse me, coming east, going north, uh, you can find some more affordable neighborhoods. It's, that's going to be totally dependent on the area and neighborhood that you are looking in. Rent average for an average area is $1,700, and that's probably going to get you a two-bed, two-bath apartment. In the more expensive areas for an apartment, you're going to be looking at around $2,100. If you are looking for a single-family home in some of the more popular neighborhoods across the area, then you're probably looking closer to $2,500 plus. Um, And then, of course, if you're going to look for a single family home closer, much closer to Denver, then that price is probably going to go up once again. So that's very dependent on the area that you choose to live in when you move here to the Denver area. Property taxes I have found to be lower because we are in Illinois where it was ridiculous. But there are areas where property taxes are more expensive. For some reason, one of those areas is Commerce City, which is out by DIA, out by the airport. Property taxes there are higher than some of the other areas. The parts of Aurora property taxes are higher. So once again, that's going to differ from county to county and from area to area on what you're paying for property taxes. Up here in Weld County for a 
let's say average three bed, two bath home, you're probably going to be $3,000 a year in those property taxes. Insurance here, house insurance, um, home insurance, it has gone up over the past few years. And the reason is we're having more hailstorms and also the wildfires that happen. So it doesn't matter if that fire happens, you know, four hours away, as long as it's still in the state, it can still affect our rates. So we have seen property taxes going up over the past couple of years to cover those events. And the hailstorms have gotten worse in the past couple of years. That is, there's some definite truth to that. More roofs have been replaced and they definitely whip through quickly and do some damage. So here in the Denver area, we have actually seen house prices rise more than any other state in the country since 2009. And that was an article I was reading that was talking about that. Let me see if I still have that up. I do not. Um, but there was an article from a new statistic company that was looking at price, you know, increases since that economic downturn we had in 2009 and Denver was one of the highest rising cities in house prices. So that's just something to note. An average year of childcare, let's talk about childcare because I hear that people saying it's very expensive here compared to where they were before. We had our son in a preschool in St. Louis and he only went two or three days a week and it was a small private um, preschool run by a church and I it was so long ago that I don't even remember how much that cost us um, but when you're looking at average year of childcare costs around here you're looking between that 12,000 to 14,000 mark a year and that's if you're in a private um, center and that is for an older toddler you know, your infant care is probably going to cost you more. If you find a good in-home care place, that's probably going to cost you less. But that kind of just gives you a ballpark of yearly costs for childcare. We do have public preschool here, but it's very hard to get into. You usually, your child has to have some kind of delay or they need some kind of extra assistance or you need to just be lucky to get um, on those lottery lists and get up front on those lists because it can be very hard to get into free public uh, preschool here in the Colorado area just because the amount of people we have here and there's not that many programs. Now when we're talking about grocery costs let's look at some of those. Um, I feel like they were higher here than they were in the Midwest but in St. Louis, we had Aldi's and that helped us out so much. And we don't have Aldi's here in Colorado, which sucks. Aldi's, if you're listening, please come to Colorado. Um, Aldi's really helped us reduce our grocery costs. Here now, we tend to shop at Costco. We just go, you know, do our big shop of meat and then stock up on produce as needed. And that has helped keep our grocery costs a little bit lower. We also have Walmart, of course, and then there are some other. Um, places that you can save money here and there on your groceries. The average cost of a liter of whole fat milk is 85 cents. One pound of boneless chicken breast will cost you around $4.37. One dozen eggs will cost you around $3.37. There's a lot of 37 cents here. A basic lunch out at a restaurant will cost you around $17. And that's probably before the tip. Um, fast food or casual food, you know, restaurant is going to cost you around $9 and that would be with a drink and then you have to add tax onto that. So those are just some, um, you know, basic ideas of groceries compared to where you might be living now in lunches and fast food. When it comes to entertainment costs, it really depends what you choose to do for entertainment. We have so many choices here, so it can be hard to kind of nut that out. But I think like you can get an average movie ticket for under 10 bucks. If you go earlier in the morning, it's cheaper. It's like $6, you know, a pint of beer. And I'm going to talk about that because I go to breweries. I love a good craft beer. A pint of beer is usually between six to eight dollars here. 
I don't know how much a glass of wine costs. I don't drink wine. I have no idea. Um, but I can give you like, like once again, I can give you the price on beer. So that kind of covers, you know, covers your property tax, covers insurance, covers um, housing. We covered groceries a little bit. We talked about childcare. What else would you want to know about prices here in Colorado? I think housing is the big one. That's the one that shocks people the most when they're moving here and they start looking for a house or they start looking for a rental online and they realize just how much it's going to cost them and just how much less they're going to get for their money, which is usually the response that I get. Um, you know, for the same amount, we could get this. For the same amount, you know, we could have way more bedrooms. I know our first house in, Col in St. Louis cost us less than $100,000. Um, you can't get anything here, especially around the Denver area. You can't get anything for under two fifty. When I go in and do a search, which I did yesterday, and I put in Denver, two plus bedrooms, one plus bath, detached home, there was nothing under 250000 And those ones at 250000 were very old houses under 1,000 square feet that needed a lot of work. Um, it's hard to find something good under three fifty. you know, even in some of the less popular areas. But the great thing is, you know, you can negotiate your time. So if you don't mind having a commute, then you can save some money on housing. If you don't want to commute at all, then depending on where you're working, you're probably going to cough up a little more money on housing than you might like to, but you're going to save time and you're going to save money on gas. The great thing about Colorado when it comes to, you know, living here and saving money is that we do have so many great things you can do outdoors for free. Going on hikes, you know, hitting the bike trails, going to the park. We have so many parks and playgrounds. And, you know, if you're on a budget, the rec center is a great place to go. $3, you can hang out all day. They have great pools and slides and things like that for the kids. They're also affordable if you're looking for a place to work out. So there are some, some ways that we can save money here living in the Denver area. And a lot of those have to do with our outdoor recreational opportunities and all the great parks and open space here. So maybe a short episode today, but I hope that kind of helps give you an understanding of the cost of living here in Colorado or here in Denver, I shouldn't say Colorado, here in the Denver area. If you would like a free Denver relocation guide, I have one for you. You just need to let me know and you can send me an email at Haley, H-A-L-E-Y, at your, Y-O-U-R, AussieAgent.com or contact me on my website, www.youraussieagent.com and I will get you that free Denver relocation guide, which has about 18 to 19 pages of information. I put it together myself, so it's not full of advertisements, it's just full of great information to help you when moving to the Denver area. I hope this very brief episode helped today, give you an idea of the cost of living here in Denver, and helps you make your decision on whether to move to the Denver area or not. Thanks for listening, watching, and following me. I truly appreciate it. Once again, Haley Bartlett, your Aussie agent with Cell State Peak Realty, and I will uh, catch you guys next week. See you later.